Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Benjamin Fodor, who is also known as Phoenix Jones? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing you by this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I'll put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case, including the timeline of the bizarre activity, then offer my analysis. Benjamin John Francis Fodor was born on May 25, 1988, in the state of Texas. He went by the name Ben. When he was nine years old, he was adopted by a couple who lived in Seattle, Washington. At some point, Ben became a professional MMA fighter. One day, Ben had an experience that would change his life forever. Ben and his son had visited the Wild Waves Amusement Park in Federal Way, Washington, which is about 30 minutes south of Seattle. When they returned to Ben's Kia, they found that a window had been broken. Ben's son slipped on the broken glass and cut his knee. Ben called out to several bystanders to call for help, but no one did. A few weeks later, Ben saw a friend of his being attacked outside of a bar as 70 witnesses stood there and did nothing. Ben chased the assailants and came across a ski mask that they had tossed into the bushes. As he picked up the ski mask and examined it, he realized what he needed to do. It was time for Ben to take matters into his own hands. The lawlessness was out of control. Ben Fodor transformed into a real-life superhero called Phoenix Jones. Essentially, a vehicle break-in became Ben's superhero origin story. Ben designed his own black and gold superhero suit, which included a bullet-resistant vest. He carried equipment like pepper spray, handcuffs, a stun baton, and a first aid kit. Ben's mission was to battle crime on the mean streets of Seattle, a city that has a crime rate about 20% lower than the national average. Ben went to work to reduce this crime rate even further. During an incident in January 2011, Ben chased away an alleged car thief. On another occasion, Ben prevented a man who was intoxicated from entering his own vehicle. He did this by threatening the man with a stun baton. Sometime around July 2011, Ben became the leader of a crime-fighting brigade called the Rain City Superhero Movement. The members of this group wore costumes and patrolled the streets. In addition to Ben, who again went by the name Phoenix Jones, the group had other crime fighters who also used colorful names like the Mantis, Green Reaper, Catastrophe, Prodigy, Buster Doe, D-Day, Thorn, Gemini, Penelope, Thunder 88, Red Dragon, Midnight Jack, Purple Rain, Sky Man, and No Name. The last one gets the award for creativity. I guess the superhero was like, all the good names are taken, just call me No Name. Some of the other members of the group had costumes which were about as sophisticated as the one that Ben had, but many of the superheroes appeared to be running on a strict budget as far as their apparel. They remind me of a kid who purchased his Halloween costume from a drugstore two hours before trick-or-treating started, like the selection was pretty limited. The superheroes were excited for a new adventure, but the police in the area were not too thrilled. They were worried that the group would cause more trouble than it would solve. The police encouraged the group to simply report crime and not directly intervene. This didn't stop the group from crime-fighting efforts. Here are just a few examples of the adventures of Ben and his superhero associates. After a man tried to steal a bus, Ben used pepper spray on him. In October 2011, Ben supposedly broke up a fight between two groups of people at a nightclub and once again used pepper spray. He was arrested after witnesses said there was no fight, and Ben simply attacked people with pepper spray while saying, I'm a superhero. Ben was charged with misdemeanor assault, but later the prosecutors dismissed the charges. At some other point around the same time, Ben was involved in another pepper spray incident. The police said that his use was questionable, but a victim later reported that Ben saved him from being attacked. Ben and other superheroes chased after a man who was accused in a stabbing attack. The police arrested the man. Ben claimed that he went undercover with protesters in downtown Seattle 
and became aware of a plot to bomb the city courthouse. He claimed that he informed the police about this threat, but they didn't do anything. Ben and other superheroes engaged the protesters, and some type of fight occurred. In addition to these incidents, the superheroes claimed that they were helpful in other ways, like assisting stranded motorists, preventing people from driving while intoxicated, escorting people to their cars, preventing carjackings, and dealing with a man swinging a golf club while making threatening statements. In May 2014, Ben announced that the Rain City superhero movement had been disbanded. It would appear as though the forces of evil had overcome the incredible crime-fighting campaign. This didn't stop Ben from being a superhero. In 2015, he intervened after spotting three men attacking a male victim. In 2016, Ben offered to help the police talk to a man who had climbed up a sequoia tree. The tree was 80 feet tall. The police declined Ben's generous offer. Ben Fodor was not only active as a crime fighter, he also found himself on the other side as an alleged crime participant. I guess he wanted the full criminal experience. Since 2008, Ben had been cited eight times for driving with a suspended license. He was arrested in 2011 for assault, but as I mentioned, those charges were dropped. In January 2020, he was arrested for two counts of violation of the Uniform Control Substances Act. He allegedly tried to sell MDMA and was in the possession of cocaine. The police had received tips about Ben being an alleged drug dealer and set him up using an undercover agent. Some people implied that Ben had been dealing drugs for a while, and the police should have arrested him much earlier. They could not believe that Ben had escaped justice for this long. The city attorney was not a fan of Ben Fodor. He said that he was no hero, rather a deeply misguided individual, and had been warned that his actions put people in danger. Now moving to my analysis. Here are my thoughts on a few areas that stood out to me in this case. Item number one, Ben was not popular with law enforcement from early in his superhero career, but he soon alienated his friends and the public as well. There was the sense that Ben was really just looking to fight people. He was seeking out trouble on the streets of Seattle. Ben frequently patrolled areas where people were known to be walking around intoxicated, like near bars. Ben would sometimes hide behind the mutual combat law. This is a law, which only appears in Washington and Texas, that makes it legal under certain circumstances to fight in a public place. Both parties must agree to the fight, and a police officer is supposed to be the referee, as if the police have nothing better to do than stand there and watch people fight. Ben was a professional fighter, and yet he was engaging in mutual combat with intoxicated individuals. It didn't really seem like the fights were fair. Item number two, despite Ben's fighting ability, he was not immune to being injured. Ben claimed that he had been shot, stabbed, and his nose had been broken. He frequently inserted himself into dangerous situations. In addition, his ridiculous costume made him stand out for anyone looking to cause trouble. Item number three, it appears as though Ben had an affinity for comic books. Clearly, he viewed himself as an actual superhero. Compared to superheroes from the comic books and movies, Ben had a fairly pathetic origin story. Batman witnessed his parents being murdered by an armed robber. Spider-Man failed to stop a criminal who killed his uncle moments later. And Superman was sent from his home planet before it exploded, was adopted by farmers, and discovered he had incredible powers on Earth. Ben, otherwise known as Phoenix Jones, witnessed his son slip on broken glass. His origin story appears to be missing a powerful motivator. Is broken glass really enough to launch a superhero? I think that Ben was looking for any reason to dress up in a costume and patrol the streets. Item number four, Ben could have pursued a more traditional route to fight crime. For example, he could have applied to be a member of law enforcement. He said that police officers had to deal with too much red tape which would hinder his ability to fight crime. I would have to disagree. For example, it didn't stop the police from arresting Ben for dealing drugs. I guess there wasn't too much red tape after all. Now moving to my final item, number five. What do I think happened in this case? This is just a theory, my opinion. Ben appeared to be an impulsive, high-sensation seeker 
who was looking for action and fame. He wanted people to pay attention to him, to regard him as a champion. Ben also liked to fight people, which can be a challenging desire to channel in a pro-social way. Being an MMA fighter wasn't enough of a thrill. Ben wanted to be a superhero. In order to satisfy this desire, Ben pretended to be enraged over a couple minor incidents. He created his unconvincing origin story. After designing his own superhero suit, Ben roamed the streets looking for trouble. Eventually, he attracted other young people who had also lost their way. They formed a band of superheroes. Each superhero had a different power. For example, one of them built a taser out of a Kodak camera and was said to have an amazing ability to guess the time without looking at a watch. Another one was really good at making alcohol disappear. I wouldn't be surprised if a few of them had that special power. Ben also contributed to the group using his superhero abilities, namely allegedly dealing drugs and engaging intoxicated people in lopsided street fights. I think that Ben was trying to make the best of his desire to experience excitement. I don't think he set out to break the law. Rather, Ben really did want to help people, at least at first. Sometimes it can be difficult to channel excitement-seeking into legal and pro-social endeavors. I'm not surprised that Ben attracted a group of people who also wanted to be superheroes. Many people are looking for a purpose in life. They are looking for some way to rise above the ordinary. They want to make a special contribution that benefits society. Eventually, the group disbanded because the other members could not keep up with Ben. He was simply too aggressive and haphazard. Many of the members were looking for a lower impact superhero lifestyle, perhaps something more like a desk job. Ultimately, Ben had to give up his superhero pursuit. Overall, he may have been a failed crusader for justice, but he did manage facilitating at least one high-profile arrest, his own. There is a famous line from the Batman movie, The Dark Knight, where Harvey Dent says, quote, you either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain, unquote. I think sometimes what happens is the people start out as the villain, but manage to stay hidden. After this, they play the hero for a while, which leads to them getting discovered as the villain. Those are my thoughts on the case of Benjamin Fodor, otherwise known as Phoenix Jones. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comments section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.